your mind this entire time. That white-haired man I saw before the competition started. The secret conversation we overheard after the first round ended. Uh, wait, what secret conversation? <laughs> Traveler, Paimon. I finally found you. Finally? Did something happen? Don't you feel like there's something off about this year's academia extravaganza? When Candace and I were at the cafe earlier, we might have caught sight of some mercs on business. Thing is, they were disguised as tourists here to shop. But no disguise can mask the stench of blood. Just from their suspicious looks, I bet they do dirty work like kidnapping or assassinations. We eavesdropped on them for a while. Their target seems to be someone called Sachin. Sachin? Isn't that the person who Karina mentioned during the opening ceremony? He's apparently the sponsor behind the competition prizes and the diadem of knowledge, but he hasn't shown himself at all. <sighs> Sounds like a rich person, all right. He makes sense now. The Aramites have been struggling to make ends meet recently, so a lot of groups have been doing private work that involves the rich. In their words, one gig sets you up for half a year. Just one job like this nets them enough mora to take it easy for a while. The extravaganza has brought many tourists to Sumeru City all at once. So it's likely that they took advantage of the bustle to sneak in. Dia and I wanted to directly capture them, but they were on guard and made some excuse to slip away. I would have tied them up if it wouldn't have caused a scene. Who's legally supposed to take care of this kind of thing? The Matra, or the Core of Thirty. Hmm. If Sino were here, he'd definitely get involved. <gasps> Why don't we head over to the Academia and tell a Matra? Thanks a million, you two. Not at all. It was coincidence on our part as well. Yeah, don't sweat it. The Aramite's reputation is gonna get even worse if these scumbags succeed. Hmm, but this is Sumeru City. Candace and I don't have as much freedom to act here, so we're leaving this in your hands. Should you require our aid, come find us at the cafe. Paimon's noticed that something's bucking you. Is it the extravaganza? Cause Paimon's starting to think that there's more than meets the eye here too. Ugh, wait. Thinking like this isn't doing anything! Hmm... Let's just go find Amatra. Can I find him at the cafe? Watch out for pickpockets. small-time crooks can do. This whole Sachin affair, ah, something about it strikes me as strange. Hmm. This is good coffee. I'm surprised anyone has the guts to try to pull off something like this during the extravaganza. Just goes to show how tempting a fortune like Sachin's is. What would you do if a sum of mora like that suddenly landed in your lap? I don't know. I've never thought about it. Come on. First thing off the top of your head. How would you spend it? Hmm. Buying food, finding water sources. That kind of thing, I guess? <laughs> Sounds good for a desert life.
I thought I was supposed to- oh, oh, okay. Ugh, get confused with this map. <laughs> investigated Siraj with Arav, wasn't it? Let's go talk to him. <laughs> Gotta try, right? <laughs> Hello, both. It's been a while. Do you have any issues to report? Someone's planning to kidnap Sachin. Goodness. Though I suppose it's not all that surprising. The growing popularity of the extravaganza has given him quite the reputation boost as its sponsor. He's seen as one of these super rich types. Well, since he's got a target on his back now, shouldn't you send some people to protect him? To tell you the truth, we've thought about doing just that. However, Sachin apparently prefers to spend most of his time out doing field work, and hardly ever comes back to Sumeru City. No one has been able to contact him. Our only lead is something he once said. <clears throat> Each time the Inter-Darshan Championship is held, I will be watching from close by to choose a suitable person to inherit my estate. Assuming he remains committed to that promise, then he must be right here in the city somewhere. I suspect that the Aramites in question must have heard about that as well, and decided to come here and try their luck. So, they shouldn't know where Sachin is either, right? I would assume not. Anyway, Mahamatra Sino is still on vacation, so I'll handle this. Don't you worry. A couple of kidnappers aren't gonna get very far in Sumeru City these days. I have my ways of forcing them out into the open. All of that said, if you're interested in Sachin's story, why don't you try tracking him down as well? The sooner we ascertain his whereabouts, the quicker we can act to ensure his safety. I mean, you could task all the Matra and the whole Corps of Thirty with someone's protection, or if the client doesn't show themselves, there's nothing we can do to help them. Fair point. Guess we should start searching for him too, but where should we start? Do the Matra have any information at all on Sanchez? None, I'm afraid. He's never committed any crimes or broken academic protocol, so we don't have a very detailed file on him. I've heard that Alhatham has now stepped down from his post as acting Grand Sage and is back to being the scribe again. Maybe it's worth checking to see if he knows anything. He's always the first to leave after the competition ends, and he never tells anyone where he'll be going. Huh. Yeah, actually, that sounds about right for him. Hmm. Let me think. Hmm. To be honest, he doesn't seem very interested in the extravaganza, so he probably doesn't stick around longer than he has to. To him, being a commentator is just extra work he was roped into. Do you guys know of any places he'd go after work? Maybe he went home? Ooh, maybe! Sino remembers that his house isn't that far from here, so we might as well check it out! Oh, all the noises are being recorded. Let's try that 
You two? Oh, Kame, you're home! Afraid to open the door? Come on in, I'll get the door for you. <laughs> we didn't hear a peep when we first knocked. We thought no one was home. Well, I can't be too careful. If someone from the Academia came here looking for all Hathen, and I opened the door for them without thinking, before long the whole city would know that I'm living here. You're pretty conscientious about this, huh? So, what happens if someone comes inside looking for him while you're at home? It's fine, as long as I stay in my own room. Anyway, why would someone just barge in here looking for him? Most people have better things to do. What do you think? Who knows what he does in his free time? All that matters to me is that he's out of the house. Do you know the quarrel or something? I wouldn't call it that. He's just incapable of saying anything pleasant at all. It's so true. I told him how the second round went. I won the lock draw, remember? Because of good karma, of course. My luck's on the rise. I don't know about that. But him, being him... You wouldn't believe what he said after I was done talking! You're always quick to remind me that you're my upperclassman, and yet you do not problem-solve in the manner becoming of an upperclassman. This begs the question of why we attach prestige to seniority at all. What does he mean, manner becoming of an upperclassman? What, am I supposed to earn the title of upperclassman now? And he didn't stop there. He said, I'd encourage you to reflect on why you've ended up having to rely on luck every round. Frankly, it's incomprehensible to me how you've managed to make it to this age without acknowledging the proverbial elephant in the room of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does sound like something all Hatham would say. I've had it with him. Every time I talk to him, it's the same way. He finds a way to infuriate me every single time. <sighs> anyway, the disdain is very much mutual between us, so I'll be moving out as soon as possible. I'm actually packing my things right now. He'll have to get used to doing his own cleaning and tidying from now on. See those perfectly hung paintings on the walls? They're coming with me, too. <laughs> if his life wasn't utterly devoid of artistic sensibility already, it certainly will be after today. <laughs> well, if you do a story, he doesn't really like your paintings anyway, so... Wait, you're moving out already? But the competition isn't even over yet! How can you afford it? Well, obviously I can't just yet. I'm just packing early to get ahead of the game. I've got my new place picked out already. The moment I have my hands on the prize money, I'm going to buy it and move my things right in. It'll take me three days tops to move out of here for good. What if you don't know? I now know what I have to do to achieve this goal. No matter what happens in the third round, I will win. I will emerge triumphant. You'll see. Well, we'll be rooting for you. But are you sure you'll be all right? In what way? Layla said that she thinks you'll get caught up in internal conflict. Meaning what exactly? Oh, don't tell me you think I have serious personality flaws too. Oh, we didn't say that. <laughs> but think about it. You said you want to win, but you also turned Faro's on down when she offered to give you her points. Plus, you took it upon yourself to help those desert foxes. Wait, what's so unusual about all that? I gave you my reasons. I would have felt guilty otherwise. Where's the conflict in that? Why would you feel guilty? <sighs> I would feel guilty if I let the foxes just, you know, do their thing. <laughs> well, when you put it like that... Yes, why indeed? It's a good question. I guess it's just in my nature. Plus, if I just did nothing, then there'd be no escaping the blame if something bad came of it later down the line. But thinking like that all the time must make your life so exhausting. Not to mention that by helping out, you put yourself at risk. 
fainting in the middle of the desert, for example. Was that really worth it? Let's save the foxes, yes. <laughs> it's complicated. I... <laughs> Look, let's maybe leave this conversation for another time. What was it you needed all Hatham's help with, anyway? We like to help... Bleh. We'd like him to help us look into Sanchin. Sachin. Sanchin. Huh. He did actually mention a Sachin recently. I remember he brought a few documents home that day. He was thinking out loud as he looked through them, making some notes and doodling as he went. He even suggested that I should take a look, but I didn't. Uh, give me a moment. Let me go find them. Ah, this is the one. Here, take it. Uh, you sure he'd be okay with this? Oh, with taking liberties? He's certainly okay with helping himself to my beer whenever he pleases. And anyway, he did ask me if I wanted to read his notes. I didn't see the point at the time, so he just left them on the side. He doesn't leave documents lying around unless he's okay with other people reading them. It's fine, I promise. Cool, if you say so. Okay, let's see what he's got on Sachin. Oh, let's get documents on the table. I fetched the documents for you. Feel free to look through them at your leisure. Where are they? Do we get to go in the library? <laughs> oh, darn. Oh, but can I? Can I? I get to go in here now! Yay! Can I sit? <laughs> Can I sit here? No. Too bad. There's a camera over here. <laughs> okay, enough of this. <laughs> okay, he's not gonna say anything. I just know it. Can you make oh. these notes there on purpose? Or was this sheer coincidence? No. But if it wasn't a coincidence, then... Ah, he knew! That's how he is. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> that was a lot of information. <laughs> I'm just getting a headache. So... To sum up, the chief put the academia in charge of managing his estate and went off to do research, right? He even said that if he really liked one of the contestants, he wouldn't just give them a reward, but his entire estate as well! Oh, that must be worth heaps and heaps of Mora! What? Are you serious? All of Sachin's wealth, that's... more than I could spend in a lifetime, surely. Heck, if I got chosen... I'd be able to pay off all my debts, then buy a new place, and still have cash to burn. Well, don't b burn it, you know, immaturely. I could build another palace of Alcazar's array. Except this time, I'd make oh. it ten times bigger. What did I just say? <laughs> oh, then there's that new project in Port Ormos, of course. The bridge renovation. To do it properly would take upwards of... You're right. First, I need to focus on winning and moving out of this place. Huh? Wait a moment. There's a loose slip of paper tucked in between these pages. Did I hate them like this? It looks like he was jotting ideas down as he was thinking things over. Hmm. Let's see. Um, two phrases have been circled. The chain dead or alive, unknown. And diadem of knowledge. Some of this stuff is just plain incomprehensible. Is this written in some other language? Let me see. Huh. I recognize this script. Hmm. Give me a second. <clears throat> Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. That's a rough translation, anyway. I can't guarantee it's 100% accurate. Hmm? There's another, smaller line of text underneath. Uh, huh. Why would he bring that up? Wow! It's so cool 
Surely you can actually read this script! We worked together on a project once when we were students. The title was Decoding the Runes and Architectural Philosophy of the Ruins of King Deshret's Civilization. I had to familiarize myself a little with this script at the time. Oh, interesting! So, any idea what Alhatha meant by all this? Huh, <laughs> who knows? The way his mind works is one of the great mysteries of the world. Fair enough! Well, guess we've learned all we can here. Yeah, you better catch those crooks. But until then, uh, let's just head out for a stroll. Hmm, little decisions. What could have been going through his mind when he wrote that? Do this one now. I thought it might be boring now. that house. Well, what'd I do? Oh, I did one thing. No, I'm doing the wrong thing. Like that, okay. Oh, there's this one over here too. I didn't notice that one. I did, but I, I forgot about it. So this sticks to ground. Uh, is that gonna be good enough? Move, 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 move. I'm not sure if it's gonna be good enough. Where's the thing I can't use it? Cancel, rotate. Oh, okay. There we go. Um. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be good enough. Yeah, we'll just try it. Uh, save. Go kill me.
mind giving it to me for free? <laughs> Why don't they give her a voice?
Dawn, break forth! This may hurt a little. Really, these guys? out of the the range. He was up here. Over here? Ah, you're here. Sorry, I was just about to send someone to inform you. I only just finished interrogating the suspects. What did you find out? Well, lots of unexpected details, let's put it that way. The mercs themselves were surprisingly easy to catch. You just had someone dress up as Sachin and they took the bait. But then it starts to get messy. During the interrogation, we learned that they were hired by Sachin's own child. It's anybody's guess at this point. 
In any event, apparently the guys we caught are just the tip of the iceberg. Most of them are still snooping around outside the city. We're diverting manpower as we speak to try and round them all up. Would you like to come along? Like a bunch of them got beaten up. Uh, are you sure this is the right place? Something feels off. I'm positive, but I don't understand why they're all unconscious on the ground. Boss, we got more company. Look, we were just doing what we were paid to do. You're punishing the wrong people here. You want the real culprit? It's this guy. He hired us to kidnap Sachin. What happened? Who beat you all up? Wait, you mean you aren't with them? With who? Who did this? First there was this flying brat. Didn't bother asking any questions, just started throwing punches. After that, some guy wearing green came along and interrogated us for a bit. Flying brat? And green? I've got the confirmation I needed. This is the one who masterminded this whole plot. Jawani. Sachin's son. If you have any questions for him, now's your chance to ask them. When you're done, I'm arresting them all and taking them back to the Academia for further interrogation. Hmm. What do you think? Twenty years ago, we upped and left to go and live a carefree life. Not giving a second thought for my welfare. As if that's not bad enough already, he wouldn't put his entire fortune in the care of the Academia, along with a contract saying that one day he'd pass it all on to a genius he admired. That's my inheritance. By rights! You expect me to sit back and watch it go to someone else? If he won't give me what's mine... I'll just have to take it from him. Were you seriously planning to... Of course! Didn't he say he would be here somewhere, watching the championship from the shadows? So, I figured I'd get some people to nab him. Then I make him change the contract. And if the Academia doesn't agree to hand over the goods, I make him publicly announce that I'm his chosen genius. So did you find him? No. The old fart knows how to stay hidden. I'll give him that. He's probably cooped up somewhere, watching all this go on, and laughing to himself. <clears throat> I already thought he'd gone mad 20 years ago. And who knows what a madman's truly capable of. What do you know about the Diadem of the no Knowledge? Diadem of Knowledge? You mean that thing he donated to the Academia? Well, I can tell you that it's very expensive. He sold a lot of assets to purchase it back in the day. <laughs> Weird things started happening after he brought it home, too. For example, sometimes we'd hear a high-pitched voice coming from the storage room. Creepy. Also, before donating it to the Academia, he once shut himself in that same storeroom and researched it non-stop for days. Something was already seriously wrong with him by that point. Nothing he did shocked me. What do you mean, something wrong with him? I only have a vague memory of it since I was very young at the time. But I have the impression that he went out into the desert for research and didn't return for many years. When he finally did return, he was a changed person. He would mumble incomprehensibly and write essays day and night. I asked if I could see what he'd written, but he chased me out of the room. Later, he went out somewhere and took his written essays with him. When he got back, he signed his contract with the Academia. 
Part of me wonders whether he'd already stopped being my father by that point. Perhaps the man we called Sachin was a demon from the desert who was wearing his skin. Could be. I mean, I just found out that he died. Supposedly. Uh, okay, you can stop now. You're creeping my mouth. You can believe me or not. It doesn't matter to me. I told you all I know. But if you do see Sachin, tell him this for me. Whatever it is that he's researching out there, he'll always be garbage in my eyes. You finished? In that case, come with us. Well, we finally caught the guy behind all this. Thanks for providing us with the critical information. Do you still have any lingering concerns? The diadem of knowledge? Yeah! All Hatham's notes do mention that item. Scribe all Hatham looked into this matter. Hmm. Understood. Well, if you believe there to be an issue with the diadem, I'd suggest contacting the organizers and getting them to pause the competitions while we investigate. That makes sense. Okay then, let's get back to the venue. We need to tell Karina what's going on. Finally back. Where have you been? I looked everywhere for you. The third round's already started. We were out capturing some bad guys who wanted to kidnap the team. But that's not important right now. We think there might be something wrong with the Diadem of Knowledge, and we'd like to investigate it. The Diadem? That seems unlikely. The Diadem of Knowledge has been used in every extravaganza over the last two decades, always without incident. Why has this come up now? Some new information has come to light. Hmm... This is pretty serious. Let me think. Okay, here's the situation. The Diadem is currently in Mount Ima Forest. We moved it there before the third round began. In the third round, contestants have to go into Mount Ima Forest, find the Diadem, bring it back, and place it on the stand. The first person to do this gets four points. Considering how close the scores are between our contestants, Whoever wins this round is very likely to be the winner of the whole competition. As such, I suspect competition to be very fierce. We might not make it in time. You have to give it a shot. I'll mark the Diadem's location for you. Please head there immediately. Let's hope nothing happens. All right, let's go! That's weird. The locator stopped working. Is the forest interfering with it? Ugh. Let's just go grab the diadem. This place is hard to navigate around. Here? 
这边偷听。I'm gonna try and eat because that just seems like a total all hazen thing. <laughs> okay, had to make sure. <laughs> oh, looks like Layla has seized the diadem. But getting to the goal won't be easy. Competition is heating up. Oh, and here's Kave bringing up the rear. to inherit my estate, and with it, my research. Come, Kave. Come to me, my child. How do you know my name? Who are you? I am Sachin. Well, to be precise, I am but a fragment of Sachin's mind. So he did die. Fate is a curious thing. Seeing you reminds me of another I once met. But you are made of sterner stuff than he. More cognizant of the trials and tribulations of this world. It is you who are worthy to inherit all that I once owned. We meet for the first time, children. But what I mean to say now is of utmost importance. So please, pay attention and bear witness. You have all performed outstandingly in this international championship. The Academia has many rare talents among its ranks, and you are the creme of the creme. But if I were to choose a successor, I would choose you, Kave. Not only because you are victorious, but also due to our similarities in character. Uh, me? Similar to you? Why, yes. Both of us have the misfortune to be idealists. And that is the source of our misery. <laughs> Twenty-eight years ago, I came to the desert and lived there for eight full years. What do you think I saw there? Alas, endless strife and slaughter. Conflict over water sources. Robbing of merchant caravans. Exploitation of the people relentlessly, day after day. 
Beyond the wall of Samiel lay a completely different world from the one I knew. The things I witnessed there tormented me greatly. I wished desperately to find a way to save them. So, did you find a way? As a Vahumana scholar, I tried to use Vahumana knowledge to find the answer. I researched history and anthropology, performed countless experiments on human nature, and even sought out the scholars living deep in the desert who called themselves the Lost Darshan. But in the end, I found that the answer I sought simply did not exist. It was not possible to simply assign blame for these transgressions to any one party, or the sins were carved into humanity's very nature. Our nature begets conflict, and conflict begets destruction. This is the inexorable truth. The aim of my research was to draw lessons from history. But what I discovered was that history offers no such guidance. Things can only ever go from bad to worse. After this realization, I could no longer see the meaning in anything that I had ever learned. Consumed by an overwhelming sense of emptiness, I could no longer bear to face life. And so, I decided to bring my life to an end. But before I went through with it, a strange twist of fate led me to come into the possession of this diadem, which has the ability to preserve part of one's consciousness. Into it, I placed my experiences before requesting that the Academia manage my estate. As I thought, the contract you signed with the Academia was in essence your will. But if you'd given up hope on this world, why did you feel the need to do this? I mentioned that I have performed a great many experiments concerning human nature. You may regard this as the very last experiment of them all. The Academia has no shortage of genius talents, nurturing the brightest minds of every generation. And so, with a handsome reward to draw out the worthiest of individuals, my hope was that one day, I would find one who could untangle the mystery of human nature once and for all, and help to move the world onto a better path. I see. So you desired a successor who was not only a genius, but who also understood the suffering of ordinary people. Such a person would have a clearer understanding of humanity, society, and the world. Huh? But did you ever consider that wealth numbs the human heart to the pain in the world? Even an idealist may be incapable of following through on your wishes after inheriting your wealth. You are highly intelligent. Yet you are not the sort of person who would understand my line of thinking. To me, this is also part of the experiment. Part of my investigation into human nature. Whether my successor suffers as a consequence of my research, or succumbs to an indulgence in pleasure-seeking, my research will have progressed. I grieve the fundamental sickness of the world. I regret the unbearable weight of its history and I lament the research that I failed to complete. And this, Kave, my dear child, is why you will be of great utility to me. You're... you're absolutely certain that you want to give me everything you owned? For me to do with as I please? I have faith in what I see in you. Now wear the diadem, Kave, and complete the journey that I could not. So huge. Will the verdict I reached cause you suffering, or will this newfound wealth numb your heart? I look forward to your answer. All of my research materials are being stored at all. Huh? I've heard enough! My life's enough of a mess already. The last thing I need is more suffering. Keep your mora. I don't need it. Didn't you say that you saw a lot of people in pain? Well, if that's the case, then your wealth can go to them.
I guess that'll be the end of that. Harvey! Are you all right? Any physical discomfort? I'm fine. <clears throat> Thanks, Tainari. Don't worry about me. Don't push yourself too hard. Harvey? Kave may have broken the diadem, but he successfully completed the task prior to that. According to the rules, this makes him the victor of round three. Points-wise, this also makes him the winner of the Interdarshan Championship. As the champion and Sachin's personally designated successor, Kave has obtained the rights to inherit the entirety of his estate. For the avoidance of doubt, can you confirm that it is your intention to donate all of Sachin's wealth? Like I said, he thought that the world is a bad place. Well then, let's use what he left behind to change it for the better. Rejecting the world will achieve nothing. He and I... We're not the same. All right. As the scribe, I will make a record of this incident on file. The sages will contact you in person for details on how exactly Sachin's estate is to be used. That sounds fine. I don't know if his research findings were right, nor would I know how to finish his research for him. But what I do know is that by ending this here, no contestants will have to suffer. We won't be the last. There will be more championships to come, and countless future scholars will follow in our footsteps. Sachin's words can only cause pain, but not anymore. No one else has to hear them now. We're all scholars here. I know full well that shutting down his views like this is autocratic and arrogant. Fine by me. I'll bear that responsibility. It's the least I can do. And, well, it's the only thing I can do. Hmm. Well said. What you've expressed is a sense of justice and idealism that many aspire to, but few dare follow through with. I say this despite the fact that, in my view, it's quite ridiculous. You have long been aware of what your flaws are, but your pride alone prevents you from admitting it. Nevertheless, your perspective is well suited to appearing in a victory speech. Contestant Kave, on behalf of the organizing committee, it is my honor to congratulate you on your victory. What? Please, I don't need your insincere praise. Anyway, this isn't the time or place for debates. Keep your commentary focused on the competition, not my views. Congratulations, Kave. Also, you'll need to prepare for the award ceremony. Looks like the ceremony will be held at the main venue. Let's head over and check it out! Anybody? No, I don't know. Ha! Nobody here. <laughs> Thank you all for your excellent performance. And that brings this year's Interdarshan Championship to a close. Finally. It gives me great pleasure to invite our champion, Kave, to the stage to receive his award. Typically at this point, we would crown our champion with the diadem as well as presenting them with their award. However, we have just received word that Kave has inherited Sachin's estate and made the decision to donate it all to charitable causes. <gasps> Sachin's estate is getting donated? So much, Mora. And he gave it all up? Kaveh's generosity will give many struggling families the chance to change their lives for the better. Of course, without the diadem and prize money to present, this makes the award ceremony a little more concise than expected. Would you like to say a few words, Kaveh? I'm sure many of our audience, like myself, are curious to learn why you decided to give all this wealth away. I'm... 
Not entirely sure what I should say under these circumstances. I'm glad to have won, even though I'd say luck played a big part in that. As for why I want to give the Mora away, I don't support Sachin's views, and I don't want to take his Mora. With a lot of things in life, people need to experience them for themselves. It shouldn't be up to one person to make a judgment on. Not him, and not me either. Anyway, this isn't really the time and place for such weighty and complicated topics. So, um, I guess that's all. I'll leave it there. Thanks very much. Oh, Kave! Uh, just one moment. While this is a short and sweet award ceremony, we do still have a prize to present you with. Please take this limited edition Genius Invocation TCG card. Additionally, your champion status will be logged in your record. This means that the Sages will give priority consideration to any future project proposals you submit. Alright, I'll take the card. But as for project proposals... Uh, uh, forget it. In that case, I declare the award ceremony over. Let's give our champion Kave one last big round of applause. I still don't really get it. The sum of Mora would have been enough for me to live in luxury for my entire life. That just means you're not strange enough to understand the way that geniuses think. Come on, you've still got the whole Wisdom Gala to explore. <sighs> Glad that's over. I think I'm quite good at giving speeches, but this one was just so tiring. Do you mean that you're still exhausted from the competition? Honestly, you don't look happy at all, but whatever else happened, you're the champion, you know? Don't you think you should be proud of that? I suppose... <sighs> oh, wait. The Sino said he wanted the card, didn't he? And now I have it, right here. So you're gonna give it to him? But if it's a rare one, you should be able to make a tidy sum of more off it. Why would I do that? It's of no use to me whatsoever. I may as well just give it to him. Uh, could you pass it on to him for me when you next see him? Oh, whoa! This is a super big deal! You should do it yourself! Come on, let's go find Sino! Huh? But I was gonna rest for a while longer. Uh, hey, hey, stop pulling my hair! <laughs> Find him. He's right there. I see everything. Except for that. <laughs> what you looking at, Sino? I'm still thinking about the Sachin issue. What brings you here? Well, they gave me this limited edition Genius Invocation card, and I figured you'd have more use for it than I. But it's a limited edition. Are you sure you want to give it to me? What else would I do with it? I have no use for it. <sighs> but it's limited edition. Kaveh, are you in trouble? You don't have to do all this. Just tell me what's wrong, and I will help. Oh, that's not what I meant at all. Yes, I have all sorts of problems, but that has absolutely nothing to do with this card. I'll figure my own issues out by myself. All right. In that case, I accept your generosity. But now that I realize that you have no concept of its value, I cannot simply take it from you. How about this? I shall buy it from you at a fair price. Namely, the price that the previous limited edition card sold for. Oh, come on. It's just one card. How much could it really be worth? One million more, at the very least. Huh? How much?! A million more?! <laughs> if you feel that's too low, I can go a little higher. One million more for a card?! But you already have a whole bunch of these... uh... shiny ones, don't you? <laughs> I saw your deck last time we played. Not every card is this valuable, and some cards are exquisitely designed, but not rare. Huh. 
Well, I guess they must pay you plenty to be General Mahamatra if you're splashing out on things like this. But really, it's fine. I'd feel bad taking more off from a friend. Don't feel bad. I save a lot. I can spare the Mora for this card. Uh, you don't spend all your savings on your hobbies, do you? You should watch that, you know. You definitely don't want to end up borrowing money in a moment of impulsivity. Living with debt is miserable. <laughs> Sounds like you're speaking from personal experience. I guess you've been through a lot? <sighs> I don't want to talk about it. In that case, maybe you're the one who should be listening to your advice. Yeah. <laughs> In any case, I, Sino, will take this precious card, and it shall join the Deck of Destiny. Kave, come with me in a few moments to collect the Mora. Thanks to you, I have achieved my goal for participating in this tournament. All right, if you insist. Far be it from me to refuse your courtesy any further. Well, at least I'll be able to keep on top of my bills this month. Maybe I'll even have some left over. In fact, let me treat you all to a meal later. Bring Tainari and Kale, too. Well, this is what they call all well that ends well. Hmm. Kaima wonders how the other contestants are doing. Let's go check in with them, shall we? Since we're guest commentators and all.
I'm telling you, you can't go wrong taking advice from me on what to wear. Back in the day, my fashion style was considered cutting edge by everyone in academia. Really? Well then, uh, sure, Madame Farzan. Maybe you could pick out a few fashionable outfits for us. Farzan! You! <gasps> Even Dia and Candace are here! What are you all up to? Candace and I bumped into these two while we were strolling through the streets. Madame Farzan here is pretty friendly. When she heard that we were buying clothes, she decided to give us some help. Hmm. I don't really see anything I'm familiar with. Never mind. We can purchase some textiles and make the clothes ourselves. Let's go with the plain fabric as our base. And border red and pink flowers on. Oh, and some green leaves. Oh, wait a sec. Uh, you sure that's the latest style? That sounds a lot like what the older folks back home would wear. <laughs> yeah, it does. But it sounds pretty. Don't worry. This style is a timeless classic. Uh, no thanks. This is actually sounding pretty weird. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Madame Parzan's right. That style is a classic. It used to be mainstream fashion. But these days, there's some other options too. If you don't mind, how about I pick some clothes out for everyone? It's not often that we get to meet up, especially since Candace rarely makes it to Sumeru City. Also, I know a few places where I can get a great bargain. Sure. I'm happy to leave it to you. I'll come with you to have a look. One always has to keep on top of what the youth of today are into. <laughs> Madame Farazan? Uh, come quick! She's over here! Hmm? Who are you? We're new in the Academia. We saw all the amazing things you did during the competition. Do you have any classes we could sign up for? <clears throat> of course I do. And you're both very welcome to join. That's great! We can't wait. Um, what's your area of research? Precision mechanics? I'm from Haravatat. Uh-huh. But you seem like an expert in machines. Wait, sorry. I remember now. You were representing the Haravatat Darshan in the championship. Oh, their classes are so boring, though. I'm sorry, ma'am. Let me know if you run any other classes in the future. I'll be there. <laughs> I knew it. What about you? Aren't you going to leave with your friend? I think you're amazing, Madame Farzan. And I'd like to learn from you for a while, if possible. I can take the class you're teaching as an option, even though cross darshan lessons might be a little tough to arrange. But I look forward to learning from you. I see. You're a good egg, child. Don't worry. Study under me and I promise you, you will get the best teaching available. Thank you so much, ma'am. Well, I won't disturb you any further. See you in class. I don't quite understand what happened there, but congratulations, I think. Traveler, Paimon, would you two like to come and pick out some clothes? Why? I wouldn't be able to wear it. <laughs> Yay! We can! We've got a meal with Kave later, and we have to check in with all the other contestants before then. Oh, by the way, have any of you seen Hakai or Layla? I don't know where Hakai went. We just saw Layla not too long ago, though. But she was hanging out with some other Ratahua students, so we didn't get a chance to speak with her. Are you gonna go and see what she's up to? Ratahua students? They must be the ones who voted for her to enter the competition, right? Oh, she didn't end up winning, so Paimon wonders how they feel about that. Let's go take a peek. If you don't come to Sumeru City often, classic floral designs aren't a bad choice. Those don't really go out of style. And of course, since you're putting this on your body, you need to consider the type of fabric the clothes are made from. Some materials might look stunning, but they can be terribly uncomfortable to wear. Agreed. After all, is fashion not the constant phasing in and out of classics? In that sense, you could always consider the style I suggested, too. Wait, uh, sorry ma'am, but 
I think it could be quite a while before the style you recommended comes back in fashion. I actually think the style recommended by Madame Farazan is quite beautiful. Isn't it just? You have a discerning eye, my dear. beat yourself up after doing as well as you did? How bad does that make us look, huh? Heck, it's not like any of us had the guts to enter the championship. I didn't see the whole thing, but you were the only contestant who scored points in both the first two rounds, right? And I heard that you actually found the diadem first in round three. <laughs> you came so close to winning the competition. Aw, I just got lucky, I think. That can't be true. You had some really stiff competition out there. The renowned Tainari from Amorta, even Sino the General Mahamatra was there. You're amazing, all of you. Getting points off them is a huge achievement. The way I see it, people aren't exaggerating one bit with the nicknames they give you. You are a genuine genius. Aw, oh, thanks a lot. But I really don't think I qualify as a genius. In the second round, for instance, I dozed off and somehow found myself beside the device when I came to. Ah, oh, come on, don't be so hard on yourself. We've decided we're taking you out to celebrate and that's final. Let's go! Cheer up, Layla, the rest of today's all about you. Looks like things are going well for Layla. This is great! Hmm, we haven't seen Hat Guy since the end of the competition. Eh, oh well, it's almost meal time. We better go meet up with Kabe and Sino now. Oh, I can't believe it. But in the end, no one was disappointed in me. Ah, oh, what a relief. Finally. Oh, I can get some good sleep. Are you sure you have enough to cover this? Don't blow it all at once. Yeah, Kave. Don't worry. I budgeted very carefully, and this is well within my means. Anyway, I've lost count of how many times you've treated me. It's high time I return the favor. Oh, Traveler! Paimon! Over here! It didn't look like there's any room for me. Ooh, look at all this! Good food! Here we come! I heard since she's always I talking. heard that you went to see the other contestants. How's everyone doing? Farzan found herself a student, and Layla's classmates are bowled over by how well she did. Uh, we couldn't find Hat Guy, though. Who knows where he's gone? Well, Haytham's gone missing in action, too. Huh. The one time I'm actually in a good enough mood to treat him to a nice meal, he disappears without a trace. <sighs> that guy. Where the heck could he have gone? I still have questions about that note you left. Well, whatever. He can do what he wants. Now, let's eat! You shocked me a little when you hurled the diadem to the ground. 
On further reflection, of course, it made sense, but at the time I was expecting at least some amount of deliberation. Sachin's voice started talking to me inside my head from the moment I picked it up. I could feel his emotions, too. It was a mix of despair and horror swirling around inside my mind. He bombarded me with his ideas relentlessly, like he was trying to brainwash me. It gave me a splitting headache that only got worse as he went on. Like I was saying at the time, his views are not necessarily completely without value. But if all his research does is lead to misfortune, then we're probably better off without it. If his forbidden research were to spread in a harmful form, and cause people to suffer, the mantra would step in and ban it. I think you did the right thing. I suppose another way to approach it would have been to claim that you agreed to inherit his research, but give up the research as soon as you've inherited the wealth. Uh, but that wouldn't have been your style. <laughs> I won't comment on his theories or experiments, but I don't believe that he was careless in his choice of candidate. He chose you. That means he knew what he was doing. Perhaps. I just think that if you accept someone else's things, you should honor their wishes. That's a good thing. It means that you have integrity. Thank you, oh my god, thank you. See, you get me, Kale. <laughs> it's a good thing I'll hate them isn't here right now. You'd be quick to explain why you're wrong. Yep. <laughs> it seems like you always include him in the conversation, even when he isn't here. Yep. No dinner with Kave is complete without a few words about Alhatham. <laughs> I sense that Alhatham has in fact been here with us all along. He's here? Where? Why didn't you tell me? He lives rent-free in each of our hearts. Horrifying. It literally <laughs> sent chills down my spine. Good thing you didn't say that before we started eating. That would have killed the mood in a heartbeat. Yeah, you need to stop obsessing over him. <laughs> all right, enough about all Haytham. <laughs> Tainari, did you achieve what you wanted out of the championship? I did. In the first round, in fact. Word of mouth proved very effective. I spoke to a handful of people, they told their friends, and so on. Now, a record number of people have signed up to attend the next lecture. Oh, are, are you free next month? You should come along, maybe even say a few words. About what? I don't know the first thing about anything Amorta related. Just play to your strengths. For instance, you could talk about the distinguishing features of rainforest architecture. Or ask everyone not to chop down too many trees the next time they're building a house. Oh, well, that's no problem. Sure, I'll make time. Has everyone had enough to eat? I can order more if anyone's still hungry. I'm full. Thanks. Paimon's super full, too. <sighs> if only we could eat like this every day. <laughs> yeah, we should do this more often. Work will always be there, but seeing friends is important, too. This is a good restaurant. Let's definitely come here again. Sounds good. We should pick a few other places as backup options, though. There are other good places around here, too? Oh, don't forget to invite us if you go! There's nothing we love more than good food! Kave, do you have plans after this? Leave town. I was thinking of maybe going to the Academia for some alone time. Nothing set in stone, though. Why do you ask? Everyone hold him. I wonder when Kare will be able to pay off his debts. Hmm. I wish him the best of luck. It's been so nice not having to study these last few days. I hope I don't fall behind. Wait. Uh oh. I've completely forgotten where I was up to. This was some pretty successful ordering today. Not a dish wasted. Oh, I almost forgot. I should order a couple of extra things to take back home. 
With this limited edition card in my deck, I have reached peak connection with my cards. This is my most worthwhile purchase in quite some time. <laughs> Since everyone is free, why don't we play a few matches of Genius Invocation TCG? Eager to show off your new limited edition card, are you? Not to show off. This is my way of thanking you for your help. Only my best friend will have the honor of seeing this card's debut play. Alright, sure. I didn't bring my deck with me though, so I'll need to borrow one. Actually, Master, I made a new one a few days back. Don't tell me you've been spending all your study hours playing cards. Come on, no need to be so stern. They do say that your innate interests are your best teacher, don't they? <laughs> I wanted to see the card, man. Oh well. Um, leave, leave. Uh... I'm leaving. Research. Oh, right! Yeah, Sachin so said that he placed his research materials at somewhere beginning with... Ah! Uh, but Kami smashed the diadem of knowledge before he could finish! Aru? Uh, it might be dangerous if someone finds his old research stash, right? Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, where do you think it could be? Aru Village? Holy smokes, you're right! He said he spent all the time researching in the desert, didn't he? So it's very possible that that's where he'd leave all his notes! Alright then, let's head off to our village and try our luck! Yeah, I hope we will find him this time. Didn't expect to run into you here. Oh, hey, Thumb. What are you doing here? And what are you reading? Are those? Sachin's notes? Yes. I came across his profile while I was organizing some documents and became interested in his research. If it wasn't for that, I never would have agreed to being a commentator. I had a hunch after seeing the fragment of his mind, and sure enough, I came here and found his research. You've read it already? Are you alright? How do you feel? I think you may have misunderstood something. The reason Sachin chose that architect to inherit his research was that only he could really empathize with both the calamity and the humanity that these notes seek to convey. Only one who resonates with these sentiments would suffer and begin to think of history as bleak, the present as perplexing, and the future as pessimistic. Empathy is a double-edged sword. Clearly, I am not the same sort of person as Sachin was. Empaths have many friends, and their wide social circle comes with certain societal advantages. But this also makes it hard for them to achieve their goals. Why is that? All important things in life involve other people. As such, it's extremely difficult to live a life that causes no harm whatsoever to others. 
If you really want to achieve your goals, you have to be prepared to make enemies along the way. Not everyone can deal with that reality. And that reality is like the material here. Objective, heavy, negative. But, at the end of the day, for all these experiment results and conclusions, it's just one person's perspective. Sachin's. So, what are your thoughts now that you've read it? As a scholar, Sachin was without a doubt a genius. He laid the blame for the darkness in the world squarely on humanity, experimented extensively with reliable results, and drew logical conclusions. In that sense, one might say his views were correct. So, people are bad? And things can only ever get worse? All of that's true? That is not a question for me to answer. Someone else will arrive shortly. You can ask them instead. All I will say is that the world is not built on correctness alone. Sometimes, being correct means nothing at all. Those words you wrote among your notes, what did that line written in ancient script mean? Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. By their own choice, the idealist seeks to bring happiness to all while denying themselves the same. Thus, they shall never reach even the borders of truth until they wipe away the ignorance that blinds them. I've never been able to agree with certain philosophies. Even Sachin himself struggled to comprehend the notion of sacrificing oneself for the greater good. But sadly, all viewpoints will find their supporters, and the way we see the world largely decides our fates. Alright then, I got what I came for. These research materials are yours to look after. I'll be off. Wait, so you came here just to read this stuff? You missed out on a big get-together, you know. A <laughs> uh, get-together? Ah, yes, that makes sense. This is a good opportunity for that sort of thing. Guess what? Tommy treated everyone this time. Then I'm sure he packed up the leftovers for me. See ya. And there he goes. Well, seems like he really wasn't affected by this research. He said that someone else would answer our questions. What do you think that'll be? Traveler, Paimon, you're already here. Nishira! Oh, and that guy. <laughs> Wait, so you asked him to take part in the championship? <laughs> yes, it was me. Are you surprised? Actually, not really. Did you know that there was something wrong with the diadem from the start? And if so, why didn't you switch it out for another one? Because Sachin's research is not mistaken. He spent his entire life researching this topic, and these materials are a result of that. These are the crystallization of his wisdom. Yes, I was worried that the material might cause some destruction, but I didn't want to wipe away all his hard work searching for the truth. So instead... I had Hat Guy here to help me keep an eye on things. <laughs> Seriously? I think you can stop calling me that now. <laughs> Why? Don't you like it? <laughs> <sighs> well, anyway, if Sachin's chosen successor hadn't been able to handle his research, or if it had brought pain to more people, he would have intervened at a suitable moment. And after all that, the person Sachin chose turned his nose up at his life's work. Pretty hilarious. I was also hoping that this could be an opportunity for you to learn how to interact with people normally. But it looks like that didn't work out. That wasn't necessary. I'm still paying you back for your help. And the last thing I need is more reasons to be indebted to you. Mita! What did you mean by 
The Chin's research is not mistaken. Does that mean that you approve of his research? Hmm? Humans are bad. They make really bad decisions. And bad stuff happens because of those decisions. Hmm. Put it this way instead. Truth to me is like a shroom blower. Some people only see the mushroom on the shroom blower's back, and they conclude that the shroom blower is a mushroom. Others see only the shroom blower's body, and they declare that the shroom blower is a boar. Still others look deeper inside, and determine that the shroom blower is meat. These conclusions are all correct in their own way, but none of them objectively describe the shroom blower. Yep. Paimon kind of gets it. But also not really. The world is the same way. No one, not even I included, can understand it in its entirety. All of us are somewhere on the path toward truth. Within the confines of our limited knowledge, some may blindly believe in the beauty of this world, and others may focus only on its evils. Yep. In truth, the most important thing isn't what state the world is in now, but what people hope it will become. But of course, I don't mean that as a criticism or a call to action. Ultimately, my duty as the God of Wisdom is to guide every form of wisdom to a place where it can find its purpose. That was a long speech. So what are you actually going to do with these research materials? Because Kaveh has the successor of this research, does not wish to see these ideas disseminated, I will seal it up. But even though Sachin's research could be considered negative wisdom, it is still a building block of the truth. If someone wishes to follow in his footsteps in the future, I will not stop them. I also look forward to the day that a member of the Vahumana Darshan can not only comprehend his theories, but also find a way out from the despair as well. <laughs> Vahumana doesn't have that kind of talent. Wait, you're not intending to keep me in Vahumana long term, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember signing up to become a scholar. Don't you think I'm useful enough to you as a prisoner? <laughs> oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> you think so? Well, to that, I would say that in Sumeru, even prisoners have a right to an education. I hope that your studies in Vahumana will help you deal with your own fate and learn how best to settle old debts from your past. I will reveal your final thesis myself. I am expecting great things from you, Mr. Hat Guy. Twenty years ago, the Academia had just received Sachin's estate. To celebrate the huge investment, the Academia extravaganza that year was grander than usual. I was very young then, and I remember seeing posters for the Interdarshan Championship all over the city. I couldn't help but mention it to my father. I even told him that I really liked the look of the diadem. It was so unique. So he said, why don't I win it? so I can let you play with it for a few days. That made me very happy, and I nodded enthusiastically. But to my surprise, he didn't win. And when he got back home, he seemed extremely depressed. Later, he left home, saying that he wanted to do some investigating in the desert. The quicksand got him not long after that. For many years, I couldn't face up to it at all. If I just kept my mouth shut, maybe none of it would have ever happened. Your father may have seen Sachin that year. Don't mention the results of the investigation. (laughs) 
Sorry. My mind was still on the championship. Look at me, rambling away. You look really upset. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. What's past is past. We need to look towards the future. while the rest of us were eating together. I don't recall being obligated to report my whereabouts to you. Did you go find another hidey hole to read in? You need to change your ways, you know. You can't survive on books alone. Surviving on meals paid for by you would be harder still. <laughs> you? <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't take a genius to guess what you've been up to. You were investigating Sachin, weren't you? It was obvious from your notes. However, I don't believe his research alone would have been enough to pique your interest. His way of doing things is disturbing, while you... Well, to be fair, your philosophy disgusts me too, but you and Sachin are nothing alike. I don't imagine your views intersect at all. Egoism and nihilism are not the same thing. My personal interest aside, Sachin's legacy is not entirely meaningless. He conducted experiments on a great scale and left his findings behind. Also, thanks for the compliment, but I'm actually just passing through. I didn't come here for the conversation. Well, not this one at least. What do you mean? What topic of conversation could be more sacred among scholars than the exploration of differing philosophies? Well, based on what I've learned, Sachin and his disturbing way of doing things, as you put it, is very likely to have met your father 20 years ago. What did you say? Wait. So... no. Surely that doesn't mean... Huh. So that's why he thought I looked familiar. My father must have gone into the desert due to his influence. I'm afraid so. Huh. Good thing I shattered that diadem. From now on, nothing like that will ever have to happen again. The boundaries of knowledge are ever-expanding. Someone else will inevitably pick up the same line of research one day, and Vahumana regards it as a reasonable research direction. Oh, not this again. Even if you're right and people are bound to fall into the same intellectual traps, things won't necessarily go the same way again next time. You have to admit that the actions of one individual don't always predict the behavior of the group, and vice versa. Take Sachin, for instance. He's quite an anomaly. And so is the one who stopped him. You. Conflicts of this nature are indeed exceptional, but it will occur again in the future. You said it yourself. The actions of one individual cannot predict the behavior of a whole group. You know that not everyone would have chosen as you did. Uh. Even so, I stand by my views. You can forget about trying to convince me. That's fine. We've been arguing over this for years, and I don't hold any hope of you understanding. The issue we're debating has long since moved on from who's right and who's wrong. Thanks for letting me know all this. Uh, what? I said, thanks for letting me know. Hey! Stop acting like you didn't hear me! You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? <laughs> they say that earnest thanks should be given thrice, so... One more time, please. <laughs> like in the archive quest they just just ignored me the entire time well <laughs> Welcome to the uh, well whatever um <laughs> is that it that is that it uh, I guess so okay Oh, this one not open yet? Or like, oh, maybe I have to do this one first. 
fire. Okay, oops. these things. Jeez. <laughs> I think I'm good to go and I'm not. Oh, okay. This is this one. <laughs> Alright. Who do we got? Um, I said fire. Okay, over here. Over here, gotta get rid of them. I'll just put one of these things over there. 66%! So it must be over this way. Who's that over there? Huh. 51. Oh, okay. But there's another one! Trying to. <laughs> I 
anything if you fail to dig anything up? I'm quite sure there are situations in which you find nothing. I was hoping there'd be more. Oh well. <laughs> Let's do this one. Let's see. Uh, but wait, I don't think it's in my bag. What was that? From the exterior, it looks like some kind of intricate compass. According to Danae, this compass has been made with more aesthetics in mind than practicality. <laughs> okay, look how big it is. Where's the door? Oh, there it is. Resist, at least. Oh, okay. So, I'm, I'm, it that is supposed to work, right? Should I just go with what I have already? <laughs> we'll see how I do. Here. 
worth it. This other one. I'll do that. <sighs> exit, exit, exit. Today. I see everything. Rest and rebuild. Lay waste to the wicked. Guards, I can't remember. Like 
Well, I guess I'll record one of the hard ones. I think I failed the first one I did, so I'll probably fail this one as well. The first one I did, I did the opposite of what I wanted when I picked those special stuff. Today. Everyone hold hands! 
Do this one. See what that one looks like. I don't know if I want to record it though. No. Oops. So they do the little light when they're done. Well, why did they... I feel like I was going to them and then it wasn't working.
can invite her now. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's take a moment to rest and plan our next move. Where's the new stuff? Where's the new stuff? Seriously? I guess because it's in wherever it is it's supposed to be. <laughs> and I'm not finding it. Not that one. Come on! Where is it? Ah, there it is. Mm. Geez, those were a lot easier to do than the others. <laughs> well, how did it go? I assume that Lord Sangama Bay's assistance helped you discover something, yes? You mean... Sachin was not a good person. And there's definitely something wrong with that diadem of knowledge. Indeed. And in that case, shouldn't you be doing something about it? For instance, a 
telling the Academia that they should give up the Diadem? We already told the Academia, but... But what? Kami smashed the Diadem. What? <laughs> Calm down, Dory. Why are you getting so worked up? Because that was worth a million more of... <sighs> <laughs> My Diadem. My beautiful Diadem. Uh, this was supposed to be the perfect plan. I feed you the information, you discover the issue with the diadem, and then I just wait until the academia sells it off at a low price. And now, that was all for nothing. Uh, curse that Kabe. The interest rate on the mora he owes me is about to get much higher. <laughs> oh, so that's why you told us about this. Yeah, Paimon did think you were being unusually generous. Yeah, me too. My diadem! <laughs> I'm furious! <sighs> That's it. No extension on his payment this month, no matter what reason he gives. Wow, you're so mean. Is that the client? Wait. It's you! Scanning! <laughs> wait, how do you do a... Uh, wait, wait, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh. 